welcome to Imagine 2021. Uh, my name is Nirdesh Tarat Sapkota. I'm a fifth year senior. Oh my God. And um, I'm an interaction design major, interaction design and journalism major with a minor in creative writing. And welcome to Imagine 2021. Um, so today we have Molly Matat from the class of 2015. And Molly, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm Molly Matat. Uh, class of 2015. I graduated with a degree in meteorology, but right now I am a math teacher um, for OCM BOCES at Innovation Tech High School. That's really interesting. So um, let's launch right into that. Let's, yeah, <laughs> let's literally launch right into that. Um, so please tell us about your current position and what the most energizing part of your work is. Clearly it's not thunder, so... Not anymore, unfortunately. Um, you know, I, I transitioned into this career of education because I really like connecting with people and connecting with different people. And I get to do that with a bunch of amazing young minds every single day. And especially right now, given everything that's going on in education and with COVID-19, um, it really, every day is a challenge, but every day I see students being resilient and that's really energizing and it's just really cool. Well, um, that's really great to hear because as a student, obviously it's been difficult, but it's great to like also hear the teacher perspective. So thank you. Um, but can you tell us about your thoughts, goals, plans for your career while you were in college and how you eventually found your path? Yeah, so my idea of what my career was going to be in college is, is very different than what it is now. Um, I was kind of toying back and forth between, I love math and science. That's like my bread and butter. So I was leaning towards, you know, connecting with people via television and journalism and broadcasting or in education. And I eventually went towards the broadcasting realm. I worked at WTOP on campus. I did an internship with News Channel 9. And eventually I got really like my dream job in Syracuse, my hometown, doing the weather. Like I got to chase blizzards and lake effect snow and thunderstorms and it was so cool. But um, eventually I just kind of felt something missing and I felt a call back to that education. So after four years in TV, I decided to go back to get my master's degree and become a teacher. And here I am. That's great. Um, so what year did you um, go back to school? So I'm actually still in school, which being a graduate student and a teacher <laughs> right now is a little, it's a lot, but I'm uh, going to SUNY Empire and hopefully I'm graduating with my master's degree at the end of the spring semester. So I'm almost done. Like, good luck and congratulations. <laughs> um, so what is the one thing that you did or experienced or accomplished in college that has benefited you in your career? Oh, there was so there was so much during my time in Oswego, and I think that's really the best thing that I did for myself was um, try everything. I loved weather, and I was in meteorology club and WTOP, but I also loved dance. So I was in Delsart Dance Club for all four years. Um, I loved, I really loved Oswego. So I was an orientation leader for two years. I was a Laker leader, and I loved it. Um, I was a peer tutor my senior year when I started thinking. Mm, I might want to be a teacher. So I just did a lot of different things that um, I was eventually able to transfer into both my first career and my second career. So just taking all of those opportunities that Oswego has to offer really was the best thing I could have done for myself. Yeah, I think freshman me could have like done well with that advice because freshman me just wanted to like make friends, but I definitely gotten into the mindset of like getting involved. So, and I will say my freshman year, I also laid super low. I was in Johnson Hall. I was like, okay, cause college is weird when you first start, right? It's a huge change. And then sophomore year was when I found my footing and did WTOP and Laker leader and all that stuff. So I also, I gave myself a chill year. Freshman year was, was chill. <laughs> um, so, well, um, going off of that, has there ever been a time where you had to make a difficult decision or a change along your path? Yeah, I mean, the, the jump to education was a huge change. And I talked to a lot of people, a lot of connections actually like through Oswego about it, um, just kind of floating around the idea. And I was 
so scared that I was going to like disappoint somebody because I had built up this career in broadcasting. I thought I was going to be letting people down. And in reality, when you tell someone what you're passionate about, I got, I got a lot of support, but that idea of trying something brand new is really challenging. So it took a lot of thought and a lot of, um, a lot of kind of trial and error in my head of, okay, what am I, what am I really going to do if I, if I change careers? And I was lucky to have a lot of support from people in the Oswego community. Was there one specific moment where you were like, okay, like this is it, like I'm going to change my career or was it gradual? You know what? It actually started when I was doing school visits through my TV job. I would, teachers would reach out to me and say, hey, could you come talk about weather in front of tons of age groups? I did high school, I did kindergarten, I did pre-K and just, I got such an energy rush from being in a room of students who just wanted to learn about science that the more I did that, the more I thought, oh, no, 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 this is what I love. This is definitely, this is what I want to keep doing for the rest of my career. So you wanted to chase kids instead of hurricanes. <laughs> yes, I wanted to educate young minds about weather and math. And uh, that's, that's what I do. That's great to hear. So like, um, what is the one most important thing you wish you had known while you were still in Oswego about like, career options, being successful, like navigating your first job, the professional world? That's such a great question. And I think if I could go back and talk to like 18, 19, 20 year old me, I would just kind of remind her that success looks different to everybody. I had a very clear picture of what success looked like. And it was climbing the ladder and broadcasting and getting this position and doing this and achieving all of these things. When in reality, success to me needed to be what made me happy. And sometimes it's really hard to kind of be real with yourself and say, okay, what makes me happy? Um, also, I will, I do want to say, yes, I took advantage of every opportunity, but in college, I spread myself way too thin. And you can't spread yourself too thin. The, the number one thing I've learned as a teacher is you cannot serve from an empty cup. And there were several times where my cup was empty and I, was, and I didn't really know what to do. So as long as you're defining your own version of success, despite what everybody else says, and you're making sure to take care of yourself too, that's, I think, the best advice I could have given 20-year-old Molly Matat. Well, um, that's all the questions I had for you. Thank you so much for all your insight. It was really like good to hear that I should be chasing happiness instead of like an arbitrary de definition that someone else has defined. Oops, right. sorry. No, you got to do it yourself. And as long as you're happy, that's, that's a good thing. Yeah, well, thank you so much. And thank you to everyone for joining. Um, and well, that's all we have for you today. So see you guys in the next sessions.